Hey guys, it's Avrinj and welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking an early look here at the Shrike Simulations F86 Sabre. This is the North American Sabre, sometimes called Saberjet. And it's a transonic fighter aircraft produced by North American. Of course, the guys who made the P-51. Now, one of the most famous early American jets. It served in the Korean War and it took on the MiG-15s from the Soviet Union, of course, most famously. Some of the earliest jet-to-jet -jet battles in history. And it was considered one of the best and most important fighter aircraft in that war. And it was rated very highly compared to other aircraft of the time. Now, it was developed in the late 1940s. It was outdated by the end of the 50s, of course, with such rapid development. And it did provide a very versatile, adaptable and continued frontline service in other air forces. Uh, it retired in 1994 from active service with the Bolivian Air Force. Yeah, <laughs> long career there. And it was first introduced in 1949 with the U.S. Air Force, primarily used by the Japan Self-Defense Force, Air, the Spanish Air Force, the Republic of Korean Air Force, the United States Air Force, and the, the Canadian Air Force had them as well as the Canada Air Sabre. And we also had the North American FJ-23 Fury as well, which was developed from, of course, which was an early model used by the Navy. Now, this aircraft, if we look at the specifications on this model, it had a wingspan of 39 feet, a height of 14, a length of 37 feet, and she was powered by a single General Electric J47 G27 turbojet. This thing put out 26.3 kilonewtons of thrust, which is 5,910 foot-pounds. Pretty potent. She had a maximum speed of 597 knots at sea level, with a combat weight, of course, and she had a kind of cruising speed when looking at here, if I can actually see the numbers for this. I know it's giving me altitude speeds. It's not actually giving me. It's just giving me maximum, not cruise. Stall speed is 124 miles an hour or 108 knots. So actually relatively slow. With a range of 1,300 nautical miles. Combat range is looking at the numbers here. 360 nautical miles. And that's carrying 450 kilos of bombs. Two 200 gallon drop tanks. And she could also carry rockets. So we'll be looking at those in a minute. Surface ceiling, 49,000 feet. So pretty decent little aircraft. Now, had six 50 cal guns on this aircraft, of course. It could carry man for rocket pods as well. Now, this is, of course, as I mentioned, by Shrike. I will say now, this was sent to me by Shrike to look at and review early. I tell you guys when someone sends me something for free to look at. However, I'll be honest with my review, as I always am. Now, I did get some material from them to tell you. Now, this comes out on the 30th of this month. And it will be coming out at $19.95. You'll be able to get it first on their website. And I believe eventually it will be located other places too. But for the time being, it will be on their website. Now, their other stuff did come to the marketplace. So, TBC. They wanted me to tell you, though, that this is a Shrike product. And it's not to be confused with their mainline Blackbird Simulation products. And this is what they say about Shrike. It's a sister branch of their main company, Blackbird Simulations. Their team are the same for both companies. The difference is... Whilst Blackbird brings more niche, highly detailed aircraft, Shrike is focused on creating and bringing wider range of flight sim aircraft to enthusiasts. Now, I agree with that because, honestly, sometimes, as much as I love having an insanely detailed aircraft like the Porter, for example, I also want to fly a really cool aircraft. And I'm not going to be super upset if it's not got full systems depth. That's fine by me. I personally like the Apache they brought out. For this one, I've not flown the helicopter though, so I can't comment. Now, of course, this does include weapons on the website release. It will not be available, of course, on the marketplace release if it does come. But on the website release, you can. So we'll look at those in a minute. Let's go and take a look around this aircraft, shall we? We're starting the cockpit here. I'm going to quickly just pop the hood. And we'll go outside real quick. So detailing is gorgeous. Now... I don't know if this is a copy or the same appearance as the FSX P3D version that Milviz did, but it does look very similar. I didn't have that aircraft, I can't say. Pictures I've seen do seem very similar. That is very dark in there. Very dark. <laughs> Confirmed, also very dark. With a hint of something. <laughs> Beautiful model, I will say. Gorgeous. Got chocks. We like chocks. The gear is lovely and detailed. Slow that down. 
I appreciate the weathering and detail on the surface. It is really pretty to have this much kind of life and vitality to an aircraft. I think it does add a lot of character rather than being pristine. And when you saw the liveries, there's some really good variety there. I must say I do like them. I like the pilot as well. A nice period appropriate pilot. And I can tell you, the goggles come down and the mask goes on when you're actually flying it. So when you're actually canopy open, it's like this. And... They go on. That is neat, right? I like that. Let's pop that back open. Anyway, we're back inside now. So we'll take a look at starting her up, shall we? So the in-game checklist will work for you. So an engine starting checklist to here. Comes with a full manual. Now, parking brake is set. That is a big red lever here. So that is out like that. External power on if available. Now, this aircraft doesn't have an internal battery for starting. So we run it off external power to start the engine. And we get an external generator that appears for a start cart when we do that, which is cool. Now, uh, throttle closed. This is interesting because the throttle has positions here. And I'm going to just pull this all the way back. Now, it does have positioning. It might not work right now because of my... It's not going to work, is it? You can click it over. Because of the way I have my throttle configured, I can't actually pull it over. But you can click it here to go into this first notched out mode. It's workable with every throttle system. It's just a little bit finicky if you have like mine the honeycomb and you have it mapped a certain way. It did work for me earlier. I'm not sure why it's working now. It absolutely did. And you've got the actual electric site caging there. So, oh, sorry. All right, let's get this back up here and let's take a look at this. The starting engine. Uh, we did that. We did that. We did that. Engine master on. Engine master's on. You did starter. Now, you can't have your actual... If you have a third-party battery switch like I do, you cannot have that switched on when doing this because the battery is technically there. So down to starter. Now, when we're starting, technically, we will basically watch our instruments here. And as we see this start to go up, obviously, we'd move it out of the gated position on the throttle to straight, outboard, as it says there, and 3%. And then we move it forward at 6% RPM, which I'm doing just now. And that's our engine starting up. Cool. So, battery starts to switch to battery. It is in battery. External power to off, which it is. That drops our power down. Keep an eye on our oil pressure, which is rising. Take a look at our instruments here, which are all coming into the green. We take a look at our flight control switch, which is down here, to reset. And then control switch to normal. And we just bounce this back to here. It doesn't like transitioning between normal viewpoint and other viewpoint, but that's a lot of aircraft that do that. And into normal. So we're good there. Now we'll look at some of the other systems whilst we're basically... I hate doing that switch between the checklist viewpoint and this, and it's not just this aircraft, it's the sim itself. So it's that kind of staggered moment where it can't quite tell what it's doing. I had to pull the manual up before it's here while we look at this. But the uh, weapon, that's the Jurassic Jetson handle. Let's go put some weapons on this aircraft, shall we? So, inboard stations will be a thousand pounds. And we have, a, yeah, Santa Barbara's not being particularly pleasant. And I think the outboard ones we need to do as well. I'll try and find what that number is I need to put on there for the load. For the externals, we need to put, I think it's another thousand pounds. It's not a thousand pounds. That's jettison. Loadouts. Outboard stations greater than a thousand pounds will cause. And I did greater than a thousand pounds, so let's put a thousand and one. There we go, we've got some H bars on there as well. Now, drop tanks we can put on as well, and that will replace our outboard stations. We'll leave those off for now, and we'll just put some HRs on there, because I do like rockets. They're fun. And that's us loaded up for bear with our little sabre. A couple of uh, dum bombs and a couple of rockets. Eight in total. A battle ground attack loadout. Okay, so 
We still have fuel tanker, which is obviously if we run those on there, which you fill them up, you'll have them. You'll feed from those first because there is no actual gauge on the external fuel tanks, as there is on the internal tanks. Now, the reason why this camera is being stupid is because my head tracking is on, and if I turn it back on again, it'll reset it and it'll work just fine, rather than being weird. There we go. Nice and smooth and perfect. Exactly what we wanted. So the guns. This The guns is an important one for us here. We'll take a look at this. Now, the gun sights, 50 cal guns, of course. You've got those in the wings. Or the nose, sorry. And it can be fired for effect only. There they are on the nose. Or six of those. Now, to use them, of course, the gun sight. I'm reading through this manual now. Okay, so our gun switch here, we flip across. Is that actually set to the right position now? There we go. And that should allow us to... It's just an effect, but you know what? It's fun to be able to do it, right? <laughs> no trace I've seen on, like, the Got Friends uh, Wildcat, of course, so, or Hellcat. So that's the thing. Right, let's get ourselves moving, shall we? We've been enough faffing around here with various functions and features. Let's get ourselves moving and do some flying. We're going to head up to Vandenberg Air Force Base today, which is a 12-minute flight, so it should give us a good chance to kick the tyres and uh, see how the Sabre actually behaves. And we'll get away from here, most importantly, because this place is a little chunky. I've forgotten how bad this can be. It needs quite a bit of thrust to get her moving. She is... Uh, Needs a bit of encouragement, I think is the best way to describe it. And I definitely want to get away from here. My sim does not like this. Our runway is over there, so it should be a quick taxi over here. To the active, we'll get the canopy closed on us. There we are. So it's moving here. We'll leave the guns guarded for now. We don't need to worry about that. Now, there is a light on our hood here. Our hood, sorry. <laughs> Panel. So we take off trim positioning. So that's me just knocked into the trim position correct for takeoff, which is just slightly uh, positive. Now, of course, we can click this panel here, the placard, on our glare shield and switch to a modern GPS system, which if you wanted to do a restored aircraft, you can. I don't like this because it takes away the actual gun sight, which... You might have in a restored aircraft, or most of it would be there, of course. And it feels very empty back there, even though this is actually what would be there if you didn't have the site in place. It just feels like everything's missing suddenly. And it's tacked on. Here we are. So, of course, we can even go to our synth vision if we wanted to, or we can go to a map. And, of course, we're going to go back to this. Until we're airborne, we'll probably need that to get to Vandenberg, but we'll be okay. Okay, let's bring the power up. 80% N1. And then release. Full power here for takeoff. And we've lost engine power. <laughs> what have I managed to do? Oh, it's coming up again. Okay. It's coming up. That's. Am I stalling the engine? Too much fuel? Okay, I'm pulling it just back from Rich. That is a bizarre behaviour. And apparently I just had to cycle my... Uh... Okay, weird. This didn't happen when I first tested it. I don't know what's causing this to happen, but I'm losing power. Most bizarre. That is so weird. Huh. It's like, I'm, I'm at full power here, and I should have... It's throttling me back. What are you doing? And we're rolling. And we have full power. You know what it was? <laughs> My controller was pressing against its throttle. <laughs> My, My controller had put down funny. It was pressing the throttle. So it was trying to give a cross input there on uh, the flight control. Which is uh, my own stupid fault. Don't kill me, Shrike. But uh, we diagnosed our problem there. And we're looking good here. So we're going to pull back and climb. 
positive rate. Trimming for climb here. Gears coming up. Let's put it just back from full power here into the green. Nice and easy. That's the first time I've ever had that happen. I've had it do that with viewpoint before, but I've never had the trigger on the controller being pressed and causing that issue. So, that was entirely me. That was nothing to do with, uh, with Shrike. <laughs> that was uh, stupidity on my part. Although, I did wonder at first if it was something I'd done wrong in the aircraft and how I was actually handling it. So, y you always wonder when it comes to these aircraft. So, it's not a very long trip up the coast of Vandenberg, but it'll give us a good chance to play around with her and see how she flies. Beautiful aircraft, I will say. Graphically stunning. Definitely up there with some of the brass that we've got out there so far. Inside and outside, she's beautiful. And if it is the same model and textures as the FSX one that Milva's released, meh, it looks great. I can't really fault them. Because they know it's a port. Well, that's not how things work. You can't port where well, you can. But things don't work if you port them. Re-exported using the same 3D model, whatever. Because there were some pretty detailed models back then. Again, this is assumption I don't know. And even if it is... Frankly, okay. When you've got the model that looks this good, that's fine. Honestly, a lot of Milvis' stuff back in the day was a bit chunky for FSX, and they work perfectly in this. So I'm okay with it. Texture resolution's good. There's a slight little bit of perhaps lower resolution things around, some of the scratching here on the canopy edging. No, that's just me. I just thought it looked like it was. I love the wear and tear and detailing there. It does actually make a big difference for me. Seeing an aircraft that looks loved and actually like it's seen some action definitely makes it more real in my eyes. It feels like it's got more attention and love played into it and it's got actually more detail. It feels more like a real aircraft because real aircraft aren't perfect. Notice when we have the uh, thingy off, the gun sight off, we do have in fact a transponder down there on our centre pedestal. Which is nice. And what's that one? That is our alternate instrument inverter. Okay. Let's put our control stick back on there. Snappy on the roll there. Of course, this was a dogfighter in its day. What'd I do wrong? What'd I do? Why did you beep at me? I, I angered it somehow. The system's gods. I wonder if firing the guns at... Uh... Oh, yes. <laughs> I love when they put these kind of effects in Warbirds. Yes, it's not DCS. Someone's going to say, oh, the DCS Sabre does this. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't get to fly over this in the DCS Sabre. That matters to me a great deal. It might not matter to you, but it matters to me. I like flying in the real world. DCS looks beautiful, sure. I just like the idea of flying a warbird under the conditions of now, or if I'm doing a historical flight, being able to look at actual maps and look at actual details and flying real routes from the war. Whether it's a bombing run from the Second World War, or flying a fighter on an intercept mission to the south coast of England, that to me is really more interesting than actually shooting at a target, frankly. Anyway, I'd personally rather run off and play War Thunder if I want to shoot at people. Much more satisfying, for my sake. So, not too far up the coast here towards Vandenberg. In fact, it's actually pretty close to us there ahead. For 20 bucks, what do we get and is it worth it? Well, we get a very detailed aircraft. We get a backup GPS system, which is more than usable. Uh, there's no autopilot, of course, which is fine. It's a F-86 Sabre. Texturing is beautiful. Flight characteristics are very, very nice. The flight handling is good. System's weight on the aircraft in terms of performance in the sim. Barely anything. I'm running at about 65 FPS right now on ultra graphics. My system, if you are curious, is a RTX 
So it's the Ryzen 9 5900X with an RTX 3070 Ti. 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator RAM. Or is it Vengeance? One of the two. And I'm having absolutely zero problem. This is running beautifully. Santa Barbara back there is a pig. But it's what it is. Vandenberg shouldn't be too far ahead of us. It is a stock scenery. I've been in here before. There's Lompoc on the way. I think it's behind these clouds or at least in that vicinity because it's Pacific Ocean over there and we run out of ground now we are going quite fast here up to 400 knots really for this effort it's quite quick that's my th uh, warning for my gear that's odd I've never heard that for the gear what have I else have I done or is it some sort of thrust warning I'm not seeing anything flashing that's what concerns me Something's whining at me, but I can't tell what. Theoretical test. We're too fast for the gear, I know that. I'm just testing something. Oh, it is gear. Okay. And there's Vandenberg ahead of us. So we'll do a, uh, a break and circuit for approach to Vandenberg. I have to have quite a lot of throttling here for this to actually stop it whining at you. Quite unusual. Oh, silence. How do I make you quiet? No. Don't press all the buttons until you go away. None of these are the relevant buttons, but that doesn't matter. You're going to annoy me because I'm only just under 50% throttle. In fact, I'm over 50% throttle and it's warning me about the gear. That is quite unusual. Uh, caveat... I was told to tell you this is 99% done, so it's not completely finished yet. I will say last flight I was at, I could go to zero throttle and got no gear warning. This time I'm getting a gear warning. So... Unusual. Not sure why. Vandenberg weapons range is out that way. Let's get a better view, shall we? There we go. Much better view. It seems to be more like thrust warning rather than it actually being gear. Because I'm still getting... Yeah, I can throttle it to zero, basically. And it only kicks in once we're under... 70%? Or perhaps? That is interesting. I'm not quite sure what's causing it. I'm sure someone will tell me. Now I wonder if a 4G break's appropriate for this. Climbing, we should be climbing, that's my bad. Oh, go away, you're annoying. Okay, gear down. Flaps first notch there. See, it goes away with the gear. Interesting. I didn't experience that when I test float before this. I will say, if that is the case, that's a very high threshold on the gear warning then. So we'll wait and see. What I will do, however, is... Where's my jettison? Did that jettison our rockets? It did, it did not. Well, we're landing with the payload. Let's give it some power here just to... There's a lot of lag on the actual engine spool up. That's a big thing I've noticed. She does want to slow down, so let's keep the speed up. There we go. We're quite far out wide here, so this is going to be less of a 180 degree arcing turn to final. More, I'm probably going to have to fly an actual civilian base like for this. So I'm quite low and so I've been faffing around looking at switches and not flying the plane. But that's the average way, isn't it? I'm never going to do anything entirely properly. But I guarantee you'll see the mistakes you'll make when you first fly something. Because <laughs> I did take this out for a quick spin around Santa Barbara before I came in to review it. But I do like to get things in one go. 
I find it gives me a more honest opinion. When I sit there and fly something over and over again and actually get it perfect, I tend to give more canned opinions, more recycled thoughts that I've had already. Whereas if I can give you the impression in real time, I think I'm genuinely a lot more honest. Okay. Flaps to full. Power back here. Well, speed's actually where we want it, so we're going to keep that up here because we're only looking for that white line there. Keep the nose where we want it. We're overshooting a little bit, so I'll keep the turn going. Until we centre back on to where we need to be. This is cockeyed. But I'll make it work. A bit of a slip and a sabre. Why not? We'll straighten her up in the aftermath. Keep an eye on my speed here. A little bit of a slipsy slidey doodah. And we're all looking good. Power's coming back. Swivel her down here. We are landing very heavy with that payload on the aircraft, so that's to be considered. Dropping the power back here. Let's let it settle down as it wants to. Keep the nose above the horizon. Touchdown. Apply braking. And she'll come to a gentle stop. That touched down so smoothly. Bringing the power down and just holding the nose at the horizon, letting her settle with the runway as long as Vandenberg. That was absolutely perfect. I must say, I like it. It flies like I would expect. There's a lot of lag though in this engine. Uh, more than perhaps a lot of jets you'll see, especially more modern fighters, you'll notice they have quite a quick spool up time. This does not. This definitely definitely has a long spool up time on the engine. Let's get turned around here. And get taxied off the side of the runway here at Vandenberg. So for 20 bucks, this is a fantastic investment. If I hadn't been sent a copy, I'd want to go buy a copy because it's a classic jet. Um, beautifully textured, beautifully made. The functionality of what you've got in the aircraft is good. Yes, it's got no systems depth, but at the same time, I'm okay with that. This is a piece of history you get to fly and enjoy. It's nothing like, of course, the Just Flight Vulcan uh, of a slightly later vintage, but it is a very, very pretty rendition of a classic aircraft that flies and behaves well and has a lot of the functions that the real one has. You can fly this by the POH. You can fly this by the actual flight manuals. It will do exactly what they did with it. It won't punish you for doing it wrong, but you can do everything correctly. So it is a study level ish. Maybe. Maybe that's a stretch. But it's certainly more than just a jump in and fly, have a party. You do have to do things a certain way. Uh, the starter being one of those examples. And things like your various tank operations, drop tank systems. Weapons jettison all do work the way they're meant to. So, it behaves like a saber. Me likey. And for 20 bucks, and as they do say, $20 is $20. A very fair price. We have had some aircraft with full systems depth for that price, but I think they are more the outlier than the norm. So, I'm okay with that. I think a good option. Like I said, I was sent this, so me being positive is going to sound like I'm being a shill. I guarantee you I am not being a shill. I kind of actually like it. It's pretty well done. I can't think of any real criticisms. Okay, I can. The The fact the whole gun sight system disappears when you basically have the system for the GPS on, I do not like because it makes the whole cockpit look a little bit empty up there. Whereas you probably have a lot of that stuff left in place. So I don't like that. But otherwise, it's okay. Just pop that on there. In general, well made. Nice. Looks good. I love the pilot figure, especially with the way the goggles and the mask come on when you close the canopy. We've got gun animations. We've got payload options. Decent. Thank you for watching. Bye.